Stay guided. Stay guided. Hear me, people of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, I'll read 9 to 13. Deuteronomy 32, 9 to 13. For the lost portion is his people. Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. Hear me. He found him in the desert and the ways howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. Let's read 11 together. And as an eagle, stirred up her nest, fluttered over her young, spread it abroad her wings, take it them, bear them on her wings. So the Lord alone, take note of that word, the Lord what? Did lead him. God alone. That means if you are led by any other source outside God, you'll be frustrated. And there was no strange God with him. That's why when you go to all these funny people to say, what is God saying? You are entering more trouble. If God is not your leader, let any prophet, in quote, lead you. The disaster you will encounter. He said, God alone led him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. That means you just be going up when God is leading you. Somebody frustration will end today. He said he, that he might eat the increase of the fields. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and the oil out of the flinty rock. If God is the one leading you, you can never struggle. So here. In Proverbs chapter 27 verse 8. It says, as a bird that wandered from a nest, <laughs> so is a man that wandered from his place. The day you don't, you are at the wrong place, you'll be displaced. It says, a man that is supposed to be a wonder to his world will begin to wander about on earth when you are not where God wants you to be. Why did God use the eagle of all creatures? You know why God used the eagle? This is it. The eagle does not struggle when there's storm. When there's heavy storm, the eagle will calculate the direction of the wind on a high mountain on a rock. He will first and foremost calculate where the wind is going. Then when the wind is able to calculate, he will now get up and allow the wind to carry him. He doesn't flap his wings. He just soars. When other boys are struggling, do you like this? They go, just, just see him in the sky like this. Is I'm in charge here. Not because he's too smart. Not because he's too strong. But because he knows the direction of the wind. And the wind is the Holy Spirit. When you follow the leading of the Holy Ghost, where others are flapping, struggling, you just soar. I pray today frustration will end in your life. So you are not, if you are struggling, you are missing it somewhere. Christianity is not for struggles. There was no strange God found in him. That means this man was led by the Holy Ghost. He did not allow something else to lead him. Hear me, people of God. The eagle stands on top of the rock, which is the word of God. And then he allows. Now, but hear this. If you read where we read, the eagle does something with an eaglet. When an eagle wants to feed the baby eaglet, he goes to bring food to the eaglet. Then a mother eagle will one day come up. That's how eagles behave. She use her pig to tear the nest. You know, baby eaglet, what's my mother doing? She will push the baby eaglet out from the top of the mountain. Then the baby eaglet from there will begin to struggle. You know, in the natural, the baby eaglet will say, my mother was very wicked. Just at the point the baby eaglet wants to crash, the mother eagle will go under her and allow her bounce at her back. Just imagine how the baby eaglet will feel. Say, my mother, you must be wicked. She will take her up. She will do it repeatedly. 
until after a while, she will shoot from her baby eaglet and show the baby eaglet her wings and do like this. Then baby eaglet will look at her that she's trying to tell her, fly like me. Then when the baby eaglet flies, she will now smile. God intentionally pushes you to face challenges. To bring your potential out. He is the omnipotent God. That means it's omnimis multidimensional. There's something in, in him that he put in everybody born again. So he allows you to face challenges. Then he tells you what is in me is in you. Just pick it up and fly like me. Somebody after this day, they will see you at the top. If you are the child of God, say amen like a child of God. If you're a believer, say amen like a believer. Amen. He doesn't want to kill you. He wants to bring what is inside of you out. If you don't know, you say, oh God, you want to kill me. Now hear this and hear me well. We read the common scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So if God is shepherding you, you are not permitted to be in want. Don't, from primary school, we know you, chapter 23. He make me to lie down where there's green pastures, where things are walking. He leads me beside the sea waters. He restored my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. So demons can't kill me. He prepares a table before me in the presence of all the witches and wizards. <laughs> now hear this and hear me well. Life can be likened to a book. Anybody on the altar with any book? Just a book. This is how life is. Let me teach. Book. A book. Okay. This is how life is. This is a book. This what? This is a book. Many people know what God has called them to be. They say, well, God told me I'm going to be a lawyer. That is vision. He told me I'm going to be a pastor. That is vision. He told me I'm going to be a preacher. That is vision. He told me I'm going to be a businessman. That is vision. There's nobody, an average person knows what he wants to be. True? But the challenge is what I'm about to teach. Is the book is delivered to all. But every book has chapter by chapter. That you stop in chapter one does not mean you understand the book. The chapters is divine guidance. So if I finish chapter one, I have to go to chapter two. Chapter two to chapter three. And divine guidance is no end. Chapter when you leave. That is where frustration comes to many people. They've discovered God's purpose for their life. They know the vision, but they don't know the face on how to go one after the other. So to stay up, you must be guided continually. Must be guided what? Are you getting what I'm talking about? You must be guided continually. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. Shout will be above only. That's where we take the scriptures from. That shall be above only. Stay guided. Now hear this. No man can outgrow divine guidance. No man can outgrow what? Failure of course when you lack guidance. With divine guidance, confusion, mistakes, failure, defeat can be eliminated. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He may get me to lie down where things are working. Let me ask you a question. Is Potter God in the Bible? So how did I hear Potter God? <laughs> how did I hear Potter God? Because where me I loved was Lagos. But they said Potter God. This is where my green pasture is. Everybody has a place. Now listen, why are you listening? I want your ears to be open. Abraham went to Egypt when things were not working. True? There was famine in Israel. Abraham went to Egypt. 
When there was famine again, in Genesis 26, Isaac wanted to go to Egypt because he said, no way, stay here with the Philistines. This is where your prosperity is. If you read Genesis 26, 1 and 12 to 14. In, in Abraham's case, Genesis 12 verse 10. Now, you would think that that would be the end. The famine went to Jacob's generation. Jacob too had a different pattern away from Abraham and Isaac. If you think it will stop that time, it went to the time of Joseph. <laughs> where it was worse than any of them. People were ready to say themselves. He became a prime minister. Each person. Now listen, you know why Christians should hear me? Listen carefully. Today, an average Nigerian, for instance, wants to run to the Western world. Because things are tough. Through, you have missed it. Yes. That's why I said that you are in UK does not mean things will be okay. Because if you are not walking by divine guidance and you leave your country to UK, it may not be okay. You may go to US and be very useless if you are not walking by divine guidance. Stay so here. I loved Lagos, but if I stayed in Lagos by now, ministry would have ended. Everybody has a place. So I hear. So open my eyes, O oh Lord, to know where I belong. Say it one more time. Say like a child of God. God is our unfailing guide. If you follow him, you'll be on the right track. If he directs you, you become a director. If the Lord is the one give you an effective guide, you never suffer casualties. It's the most certain GPS. There's no substitute to divine guidance. And let me say this. Not every open door is God's door. Many are trying this, guys. Somebody came to me and said, I have land to give to the church. I said, okay, go and show us the land. As we got to the land, as he was talking, God said, don't take it. I tapped the pastor on my side. I said, do you know what God told me? We shouldn't take this land. He said, this place is all I own it. Take all from here. You can buy all. God said, no, I'm not sending you towards here. I'm sending you towards the airport. Don't take this one. And the man said, I said, thank you. God bless you for the land. But we're not going to use it. And God gave me reason later why we shouldn't use it. And he should. Now, he told us airport. Now, from the airport to where we have the university land, which is 200 something hectares. Hectares, not hectares. Hectares. It's just 12 minutes. So he knows that if we are taking the Obigo side, how do we not put university? How will you go from one place to another? So God sees the end from the beginning. You, you, you see in part. Some of you ran out of where you are. See the way you're suffering. You will not suffer again. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Please, before you jack back, find out what God is telling you. When you follow his leading, you become a leader in any human endeavor. Now listen carefully. Putting in so much energy into something does not mean you are making progress. There is this horse that children ride. If you, if you go to shops, you see they put coin, then the horse will do like this. How many parents know it? Your children will say, Daddy, mommy put coin inside. Then they'll be sweating. They say, Mommy, I think I'm moving. But the horse is on one spot. It's what? But you see the child will be sweating. He said, Mommy, do you like the way I'm riding it? He said, Yes. He said, The horse is moving. The horse is not moving anywhere. Most of you are putting in so much energy. Hey, look at it here. Most of you are putting in so much energy. You go to three jobs. You don't sleep well in the night. You are sweating, but no progress. That you're sweating does not mean your life is making progress. The essence of divine guidance is to eliminate stress. It's to eliminate what? You will not go through struggles. So leaving your country to another country is not the answer. Are you hearing me now? That is not the answer. Let God be your guide. You will not be misguided. Seek divine guidance in order to stay up for life. Your lifting is not from abroad, it's from above. 
Let me say this. Labor does not equal success. He said the labor of the foolish will yet every one of them, because you know it not how to go into the city. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. Now, in Genesis chapter 21, 15 to 19, don't bother to read. Her guy, her guy was busy crying to God. She carried her son Ishmael and they were to die because there was no water. She said, what is it? No water, I want to die. The water was by her side. The well was what? Her side. She was so frustrated, she wanted to die. Then Ishmael was the one who prayed and got hurt. And they just turned. Because they looked by the side, there is what? The, with me, the thing to bless her was close to her. She couldn't see it. What will bless you is not from abroad, it's from above. They were fishing in Genesis chapter, sorry, John chapter 21. If you read 5 and 6, Peter and the rest were fishing. They caught no fish. They were so frustrated. And Jesus made a statement. He said, sons, have ye any meat? They said, nothing. He said, cast your net on the right side. He was so specific. He said, look, if you want to come out of frustration, right side. So many people are on the wrong side. They are what? Today, may you be on the right side. I thought you would say amen. I said, may you be on the right side. In the name of Jesus. Frustration stops when you're on the right side. It will mark the end of frustration. Stop laboring in the wrong direction. Why do I need divine guidance? Why do you need divine guidance? Without divine guidance, life is a burden full of uncertainties. You are like a blind and a deaf man walking on a highway. Will that man survive? You know why? One wrong step can destroy your whole destiny. One what? Isaiah 42, 18 to 20 and 22. Look at this. Hear ye deaf. You think this one is deaf people? Oh, listen, listen. I'm going to pray for you. He said, hear ye deaf. And look ye blind that ye may see. You think it's, okay. it's not, listen, please follow me to read. Who is blind, but what? Is it, is it, is it you? Who is the child of God? Or deaf, as my messenger that I sent. Who is blind, as it that is perfect? Do you hear that? The man is not committing sin, no. He's a perfect man, but life is so frustrating for him. Holiness without divine direction, you have whole. He said, he's a perfect man, clean man, but life is not going in. For... Many are like that. Not committing any sin, but if you look at their life, so useless. You don't want to be a Christian because if you look at them, you say, No, 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 I won't go to church like this. If this is the church, look, if you are not guided by God, you will suffer. Eh? All this suffering is a trace that you are not on the wrong track. You're on the wrong track. Today, your eyes will be open. Please, he said, If all of us shine. I said to say something yesterday. All the stars in the sky, there are many. Is anyone overshadowing the other? If each one is on the right track, all Christians will be shining. Carpenter will be the carpenter. Lawyer will be the lawyer. Doctor will be the doctor. Preacher will be the preacher. Student will be the student. We will just be shining. But because many of us are pursuing the wrong places. Just imagine if Isaac went to Egypt like his father. He would have died in Egypt. True? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That somebody went to Dubai. Does not mean if you go to Dubai, you will buy anything. <laughs> that person went to Dubai. Maybe that that was you went to Turkey and you'll be not be talking anything because nothing. You don't follow people, oh, you follow God's leading. Okay, listen. Everybody wanted me to be in Lagos. Lagos was a happening place. They told me for they said, What are you going to do in Port Harcourt? People told they said, What are you? Are you okay to go to Port Harcourt? God told me Port Harcourt, Nigeria. People said, No, no, no. No, before now, nobody makes impact in Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt is like, just go and rest. It's like a retirement home. That's how, you know, they, are, they have retirement homes. You don't know? When people retire from government, they now go to play politics, they vote them. That's a retirement home. I won't tell you one. Do we have a retirement home in Nigeria? Where people retire and then they go inside. <laughs> when you want to retire, it's Port Harcourt, like when you are tired in ministry, you come, just rest. 2000, you open your hand like this and be moving. 
So they say, but what do you want to go to Port Harcourt? What do you want to go to Port Harcourt? It's okay. But I came to Port Harcourt by the leading of God. Is it showing now? Is it showing now? That place you think is dry and God says go, that's where your lifting is. Today, may your eyes open to see that place. Today, everybody said there's oil. They call it oil city. Was oil not there before? As I came, never said, well, money day for Padakoto, money day for Padakoto. Before it was before they say Abuja, Lagos, Abuja, Lagos, Abuja, Lagos. They say, boy, if you want to see money, Abuja, you want to see money, Lagos. Now they say money day for that God. Why? I came. Where you are, God will bless you there. He said, Who is blind? But my servant, or deaf as a messiah that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect? And blind as the lost what? Imagine. Seeing many things, but thou observe it not. Opening the ears, but he hear it not. Verse 22, for time's sake. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. And they are hidden in prison houses. They pray and not do it for a spoil, not say the stone. Now I'm speaking with authority. Everyone who has who is not seeing what God is saying, not hearing what God is saying, I command your ears. It's not talking about physical ears, it's talking about spiritual ears. Your eyes. And wherever you have been held captive, be loose in the name of Jesus. I command your deaf ears open. I command your blind eyes to see and be restored to dignity in the name of Jesus. Just imagine if I didn't hear Potter Court and I stayed in Lagos. Why you need divine wealth? Number one. Divine guidance makes you an uncommon leader. It makes you what? It makes you an uncommon leader. Psalm 21 verse 3. For that my rock and my foster, therefore for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. You just lead in your field. You are just leading your field. So here. Number two. It secures your future and life. It secures your future and life. Proverbs 14.12. There's a way we cement right unto a man, but the end of the ways of death. That something seems right does not mean it is right. It's leading secures your life. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of good peace and not of evil, to give you what? Unexpected end. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. So it secures your, when you are led back, it secures your future. It secures your what? Future and your life. Number three, you enjoy the best in life in spite of your enemies. You enjoy what? In spite of your, the Lord is my, I shall not what? One, Psalm 23 verse 1. Then verse 5 says, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. If God is your shepherd, which is not important? They are not what? Important. <laughs> Can a lion be in front and the sheep is following the lion. The lion tells the sheep, I'm going to guide you. And the sheep is all following. Can any other wild beast attack that sheep? You're not getting it. A lion tells a sheep, say, I'm going to guide you. I'm your guide. And the sheep is following the lion. Small, small. Can any other wild beast attack that sheep? Why? When God is leading you, enemies are rendered useless. Are you getting what I'm talking about? They, they just look at you, they do like this. <coughs> Nothing. The least every witch is attacking you is because God is not leading you. Instead of the midnight prayers you're doing, find out what God is saying to you. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Can I tell you? I don't pray against witches. Ask me why. It's not necessary. If I pray against witches, what will I pray against the devil? I will say, me, you do seven days midnight against witches. What will you do against the devil? The reason you are doing 20 prayers against witches is because you don't know where God kept you. Okay. He said, witches are the ones stopping me from prospering. I prepared to before you. Are you not the one who read the Bible? Who read the Bible? So the witches are not the reason. It's because of ignorance. The Lord is mine. I shall not. But now you are in want. He prepared before, is this a, in the absence? In the presence? The witches are worrying you because you are supposed to be so good to you in no worry. 
So every week, you know, whether it's pursuing you up and down. But God said, go to Sokoto. You say, no, no, I don't go to Sokoto. Sokoto, no, where I go, go. Now, where I go there. So God said, okay, now all the witches, follow him. <laughs> Since I'm not his shepherd, I'm not the one leading him. I'm just giving a lion and the, and the sheep. Since I'm not shepherding him, which is, but if the, the lion is your shepherd, the sheep will just be moving like this. And the sheep can afford to sleep. The lion is one that will be awake to say, anybody want to attack the sheep, I'm in charge. And Jesus is the lion of the trap of Judah. We are the sheep of his pasture. Calm down, my brother. Find your own way. They say, follow who no road. And God is the one who knows road. It's right here. So I will enjoy the best of life. You know, when you are by that, your dignity is seen by all. May they see your dignity. Amen. Number four, you don't suffer lack. You don't suffer what? Psalm 23 verse 1. You don't eat crumbs. You don't eat crumbs. Number five, am I too fast? It eliminates laws and guarantees protection. It eliminates laws and guarantees what? Protection. Proverbs 24, verse 6, the deep part. A multitude of counselors, their safety. You don't lose anyhow. You don't what? When God is guiding, you don't lose anyhow. Your protection is guaranteed. So here. Number six. You prosper through divine guidance. You prosper through what? Divine guidance. Isaiah 48, 17 and 21. Thus saith the Lord, that I did the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord that go with teacher thee to profit. Which leadeth thee by the way that should as what? Why are you in business? Okay, let me tell you. Why are you in business? Why are you in business? To make profit. Why are you in business? Why are you in business? God said, I will teach you the way you make profit. Now listen. <laughs> it's by divine leading I started glory reign. Now, listen, I'll tell you. You know why you must be led? You will never shine if you are not being led. Before now, people do programs. Everybody, November, December, November, December, November, December, November, December, November, December. That's why you see churches do programs. And all of a sudden, God said, no, do your own program in January. And in January, it's now. In January, everywhere exploded. True? Every, the whole place exploded. I am being led. I didn't get up to just fix it. When you are led, it will show. May God lead you perfectly. Amen. Don't copy everybody's own. Do your own. Ask questions. Ask what? Questions. When I go further. Now look at 21. Oh yeah, let's do 21 together. I want to go. No, no, no. Some of you are not reading. I want to go. Where did he bring water from? From desert. Did they get water from desert? God is saying, no matter how dry the place is, if it's the one leading you, this will work. Oh, Nigeria is tough. Is it tough for us? No. Oh, Ghana is tough. It's not tough for those who God sent to Ghana. Oh, America is tough. It's not tough for those who are sent to America. Find out where God asks you to be. If it's tough, you are in the wrong place. He said, let them in the desert. It's a desert. May God bring water out where you are. I said, you will prosper. If you're in the wrong place, I command you to get to your right place. Shout a loud amen. Shout a believe in amen. So your prosperity is in the place where God sent you. Now, in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought. God said, in the midst of hardship, where things are not working, an economic meltdown, I will satisfy you. That's God speaking. When things are not working, because the Lord guide you what? Continue, it will satisfy your soul in drought, in famine. An economic crash, crisis, it will satisfy your soul. Somebody will get to another level after today. People pray. They don't ask for guidance. 
Let me say this to you. If you pray, if you like pray midnight prayer, afternoon prayer, daytime prayer, and you are not guided, you'll be frustrated. Some things, you don't need to kill yourself with prayers. You need to hear God. Are you getting me now? All these midnight prayers you're doing, some of them are stupidity, hunger strike. You get to a very midnight. But God said, my friend, go to Kano. Go to Kano. But you in Enugu. Father, Father, he said, Enugu, you'll be eating from Rocco. I said, go to Kano. You have been in Enugu for four years. Nothing has happened. Don't you know you're on the wrong side? He said, these three years, I come again the fourth year. You should know that Enugu, with the rock in them, no water is coming out. So go to Kano. He said, Kano, why go go Kano? Kano, no, be not. Now, dear, you're let's do. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I never liked Potakot. Never. I didn't like Potakot. I went to school here. So when God said Potakot, I said, Chai. Potakot of all places. God, change it now. Very funny. So that's some of the things God is telling you. He's looking at you. I said, God, can't you change it for me to stay in Lagos? I love Lagos too much. Because in Lagos, nobody cares for you. Nobody wants to know who you are. Everybody's on the way, on the go. Wah, 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 hey, hey, hey. But you know now, if I go to Lagos, I want to run away. <laughs> I said, this is like, they're crazy, yo. <laughs> but when I was there, I didn't know. But if I go there, because it's not my place again, I just want to leave Lagos. Lagos, everybody's shouting. Everybody's shouting. It's as if somebody is mad. Hey, hold on, Shania, hey, hey. They're, they're coming from church, yo. They're from church. Do you know one day we are coming out from church <laughs> and we form five lanes from church. We finished closing in Lagos. One lady told me, I said, there's madness here. All of us came from church, but we found, found the, the coming vehicles, no way to move. So all of us, so I preached a message from it. When you're lawless, you'll be stagnated. <laughs> I, came, I got five points from lawlessness. We came out from church, then we formed five lanes. The upcoming vehicles, no way to move. So all of us, we are now stagnated. One, we couldn't move forward. Two, we are frustrated. Three, <laughs> our fuel was burning, so loss of resources. I just found five. We are lawless. Lagos. But I love Lagos before now. There are people who can't, who can't leave Lagos. That's their place. And they will prosper in there. They'll be shouting, yay, things are working for them. <laughs> that is their place. But if you go there and it's not your place, you'll be shouting, yay. The landlord will say, go out. May this work for you. Yeah. Shout a better amen. Yeah. So now, how to secure God's guidance? How do you secure it? Because it's not enough to... How do I secure God's work? Okay. There are many ways. So if one way does not work, use another way. Are you getting upset now? Hmm? How to secure what? God's guidance. If you know how to secure God's guidance, life can be very sweet. Can be very what? It's so sweet. So sweet. Let me say this to you. You'll be shocked. You can only secure God's guidance when you desire to be guided. God will never guide you if you use not your desire. Trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3 verse 5 verse 6. Trust in the Lord with all the heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct the paths. There has to be a desire, Lord, I want you to guide me. Is that true? Are you hearing me? Even naturally, you have a child. He said, come here, the child refuses. Come here. You say, okay, go. Anything will happen to you, go, come down. When the child goes, he boom, mommy, mommy. And I said, I'll tell you, okay, now, here I come. So the desire has to be by you. Are you getting what I'm saying? A, how does God, how can I say that? True meekness. True what? True meekness. In Psalm 25 verse 9, the meek will he guide in judgment. And the meek will he teach his way. The meek will enjoy continuous guidance. The meek will always hear from God. Pride deafens spiritual ears. God will 
always lift the meek. Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth. Numbers 12 verse 1. And God was speaking to him face to face. I'll tell you my practical life. Meekness is very important. Meekness is very what? God will never talk to you if you are arrogant and proud. There are some things you are telling God. Lord, tell me. He says, if I tell you, you won't agree. That you takes meekness before God will speak. Are you getting me? Now, if God has not spoken to you, check your level of meekness. I told God, God told me, Port Harcourt. I heard him from the day God called me. And then a time came, someone told me, say, Pastor, the way God is using you, we need to start from Lagos. And I said, yes, we start from Lagos. I agreed. You know what I agreed? The man was very close to me and money was there. So he said, no, we have to get a property in Lagos. That day, I will never forget the old Martins, then Victoria Island. He showed me the properties. I'm going to pay for it. Buy your Mercedes Benz. I said, wow, glory to God. The moment I said that, heaven shot. Wow. I said, God, speak. God refused to speak. I said, God, I want to hear you. I became deaf. God knew in my heart that I was for Lagos when he told me to go to Port Harcourt. So everything I was praying, there was no flow. Then deep down inside me, one day my wife tapped me. That's why you must have somebody who can give you counsel. He said, my husband, go, I thought you said Port Harcourt. This is you and your, this is your friend. <laughs> this <is> Lagos. <laughs> then inside me, I said, God, at this point, I will go to Port Harcourt. The moment I said this, my God, he spoke. So I have not heard God because the first one you told you, you, are, you didn't obey. He said, leave this boy. He's not your husband. I'll give you your husband. He said, for where? <laughs> the way this boy is handsome, I can't leave. Because now, he said, God, show me my husband. No voice. Father! He knows inside you, the one you hold, you don't want to let go. <laughs> well, if you're meek enough to say, I let go, heaven's will open. May God give you what belongs to you. Amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. B, through the word of God, is the most authentic one. Through the what? Psalm 105, Psalm 119, verse 105. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's words are essential, the book of instructions. Every time you want guidance, it's in this book. It's what? It is how will I be saved? Confess Jesus. Do you need any other guidance? Confess who? You'll be saved. How can I have peace in my marriage? Oh God, love your wife, woman, submit to your husband. True? That's the guidance. Oh God, this business. See that a man did in his business. It's the guidance. It's true? You don't need another one. <laughs> Everything you're looking for, where is it? In the Bible. Is the most authentic guide. Second Timothy 3, 16 to 17. All scriptures given by the Spirit of God is profitable for what? Doctrine, reproof, instruction, and in correction and instruction in righteousness. He speaks to us primarily through his word. God is always speaking. The question is, are you listening? God is always what? Are you listening? See. By prayers of inquiry. By prayers of what? By prayers of inquiry. Call on to me and I will answer thee. And show the great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. You pray to God. And the God will talk to you. Are you going to say now? Jeremiah 33 verse 13. 29, 13. Jeremiah 29, 13. And he shall seek me and find me when he shall search for me with all the heart. In prayer, God, what are you saying? He will talk to you. Ask shall be what? Seek. Knock shall be what? Ask because available. Tell him, God, what do I do now? He will answer you. Share here. You know why prayer is important? Every time you want direction, just pray. Just what? A man called David. In First Samuel chapter 30 verse 8. He did something. He said, and David inquired of the Lord. Saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue. For thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. 
David said, God, should I pursue? What did he do? He prayed. Now, but let me explain something to you. That you pray last time, God answered you in a particular way does not mean the next will be that same way. Every time you pray a new prayer, I come again. The same David, the next one, God said, don't move until you hear his sound. That God, you pray last time, God said, travel now. Does not mean that this time, because you pray, you must travel. He may tell you, don't travel today, you travel tomorrow. Are you getting what I'm talking about? In 2 Samuel chapter 5, for time's sake, 18 to 19, 20 to 24. The same David, when the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim, he said, go ahead, 19. And David what? You remember the first one, he did what? Saying, shall I go up to the Philistines with that delivered into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines to their what? My hand. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, thou shall not go up. Did you hear this time? Are you seeing the difference? First he said what? Second he said what? So don't use one prayer you prayed last year to say that it's finished. That's why I said divine guidance is what? Continuous. It is what? Continuous. It was from prayer I got the topic stay up. I just prayed. I said, Lord, what? He says, the topic is still up. Join me to today, 28 verse 13. And as I prayed, he said, the first message you preach is the blessing. From blessing, go to how they think. From how they think, get to how they be guided. How they be guided? When the man is guided, the next thing beyond the offensive for tomorrow. Because when God guides you and you're lifted, you young. Mm, 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 mm. So that time, wow, till tomorrow. Don't come careless tomorrow. Tomorrow you go through arrows. Whoever wants to stop you, stop the person. Tomorrow is a good day. Tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is no nonsense. No. Tomorrow is a day you will not take nonsense as a Christian. Whoever wants to stop you must be stopped. Amen. Any which say you will not go forward must be dewished. To tomorrow. It makes Christianity sweet. It makes Christianity what? Sweet. You come to Christianity as a lamp, but you must carry the lion's nature to survive here. <laughs> if you carry lamp nature, you won't survive on earth. This earth, this wicked place. In fact, it is when, when you just go up, then you know whether people hate you. When you're trekking, nobody will hit you. Just buy one new car. That's when you see people greet you, will not greet you again. He say, good afternoon, sir. He will, he will do as if they don't hear you because of your new car. Then after the car, build a new house. They will look at you and say, this house will follow. <laughs> Hatred has started. They move to another level. You see gang up. So tomorrow is the day. In the midst of that, how do you so? I, I'll tell you tomorrow. Are you going to answer now? Are the witches stopping us from gathering, for God bringing people? No. So I'll tell you tomorrow. If your Christianity is only, Jesus is coming soon. Amen. 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 Forgive them. Oh, amen. They will, they will kill you. They will kill you. <laughs> they will kill you. God forbid, they will kill you. Uh, if that's the kind of Christianity you do. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon. Amen. 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 Forgive them. Oh, amen. Amen. They will match your leg like this. <laughs> God for me. You can't match my leg. Before you match, I match your leg. <laughs> Are you getting it now? The best way of defense is to be on the offensive. Let me not preach tomorrow's message for you. Tomorrow's message is already inside me here. Tell me. I like that kind of Christianity. Me, I like it. Where you roar as a lion, you still like that. All your all people are saying, Indeo. <laughs> <laughs> you heard Pastor Charles? <laughs> they came to bring down this church. And I came with my hand in my pocket. And I said, if you bring one block down here and you don't die, God is not the owner. The man looked at with armed men oh, to the teeth. As if you bring one block down and you don't die by tomorrow, God is not the owner. The man looked at me. 
Is that that toy go pray? <laughs> now just imagine if at that time I say, hey, God, that you're the owner. If we, you take the bulldozer, they were bringing bulldozer, it knocked at the roundabout. Tomorrow, eh? Oh, after God lift you, you carry that kind of Christianity. Nobody will touch you. Don't come careless tomorrow. In fact, I'll give you scripture when we close. You get angry to come tomorrow. How can you be a Christian? Somebody's tormenting you with, with, with nonsense. For what? Is it the man they use charm? He buried charm. They buried Jesus on your behalf. And he resurrected from dead. The one they buried did not resurrect. I oh, don't know. No, this is every time. Every time. Every time. I put a hand on it, they walk. What are you doing? If not, it's working. Make it work. Make it what? They were to hold. I'm almost in tomorrow. <laughs> in fact, tomorrow is already staring me up. Uh, let's go, Abeke. Let's go. D. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is intoxicating. Tomorrow is what? Have you seen somebody who is drunk and you talk to him? He said, oh, "Take your time. Take your time." He said, "Oga, why?" Are you he said, "Shut up. Take your time." He's drunk. Anything you're talking, he doesn't enter his head. He said, Oga, you want to assault me? And they said, take your time. When you're drunk with the Holy Ghost, he said, at this man, he said, we are not drunk with wine. We are drunk in the Holy Ghost. Peter said, we are not mindful of all this nonsense you're talking once preach Christ. Are you getting what I'm talking about? How can you be a Christian and then somebody's insulting your Christianity? Are you, are you mad? I will tell you, seven days you are gone. That is Christianity. One young man called Osikanko. How I many of you know him? Osikanko, you heard him before? A notorious young man. He shot a staff walking with us. I came up. He didn't kill the staff. He shot his car. I said, if Osikanko does not die this weekend, I'm not sad. I sentenced him on Thursday by Friday was killed. That is Christianity. Not the one. God, we do this. God, God, this kidnapper. The warrior was up and that. I said, Sikanku, you are dead by this weekend. By Friday, was dead. How can you be a Christian and somebody is threatening your life? You now say, Pastor, I don't know what to do. This man said he's going to deal with me. <laughs> ta, ta. Tomorrow, you see the other side of God. God has two sides. I am God that killed it. And make it alive. You know why? If you are blessed of God and you don't bring the killing side of God, they will kill you. Every man blessed of God is an envy of hell. So you must invoke the other side of God to be on the offensive. If all you do is, oh God, bless me. When you are blessed, also be ready yo, to. Fat. Why am I? I'm all, what is happening? I've left today preaching to tomorrow. To tomorrow, D. Tomorrow, carry all your family members. Everybody, your family, tell us you don't do. Come. Come. Be joyful and praiseful. Be joyful and what? Be joyful and praiseful. Do you want to hear God to speak to you? Be joyful and praiseful. Let me tell you one of the greatest secrets. He said in Isaiah 29, 30 and 21. Let me be very fast. Isaiah 29, 30 to 9, 30 to 9. You shall have a song in the night. Now, this is a very practical way. Listen, this is a very practical way. When you say like this, you want to hear God? Do you know when they play music, I hear God fast? Do you notice? You be careful the music you play at home. Be very careful. Every music has a spirit. Listen, I'm going to tell you. Every music has a what? Be careful the music you play. When you play worship, Inspired by God, you hear God. He says, you have a song as in the night. It don't have to be in the choir, just in your room. You sit on your chair and say, Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, immortal God. He will say, my son, that you're asking for, this is the answer. You will hear God as my ears. God loves worship. 
The Holy Spirit flows through worship. He says, shall hear a voice saying to you, this is the way. But let's say, why you say you should be careful? People don't know. Music came from God and Satan was the one who had access to God in music. He took honor, so he corrupted music. I'll be very practical while you listen. Check any time you listen to a worldly music. If you doubt it, now play all those worldly blues. The atmosphere will change. Try it. Just play all this, what you call blues. Is it blues? It does this. I don't know what to do. It does. We used to have Barry White, Marvin Gaye, James Brown. Now they don't have them again. You're not your own. When you listen, I'm very practical with you. Play it. A spirit will come upon you if you're a man, you want a woman at that time. It's the spirit of wardom. The demons of that worship will fall on you. The atmosphere, everything you want to do is immediately will say, Which woman there? Which woman there? Which woman there? It is not physical, it's the spirit of the music. So also when you play worship, the Holy Ghost envelops your environment. At that moment, you begin to hear God as a man hears his friend. If you come to my house, I play music 247. Even inside the elevator, there's music. Why? You can't corrupt my environment with any other thing. So be careful. Christians don't know. They say, no, no, my music, now what do you do inside? After that man of God, they play music in the year God. <laughs> Every man of God, the year God. Joy will open your spiritual ears. Elijah said, bring me a mystery. Bring me what? 2 Kings 3, 15. The moment music plays, you hear God. Train your ear. May you hear God right now. That's 2 Kings 3, 15. Then if fast and prayer. Fast and what? When you fast and pray, you hear God. In Acts 13, 3 to 4. During fasting, if you notice, you hear God very fast. Is that true? It said, and when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. Verse 4. And so they, so they, being sent forth by the what? The Holy Ghost. The more they pray. In Isaiah 58, 6. A and 11A. He said, it's not a fast that I've chosen. 11A. And the Lord shall guide you up. So when you're fasting, he guides you. Are you getting Ezra chapter 8 verse 21? For time's sake. He said, Ezra, Ezra 8. Then I proclaim a fast there at the river Hava, that we might have flicked ourselves before our God to seek of him the right way for us. Do you hear that? And for our little ones and for all us. He said, when you're fasting, God tells you this is the way to go. So fasting period is not just for hunger strike, it's to hear from God. May you hear from God. F, be still. Be what? God always comes in a still small voice. First Kings 19, 11 to 13. Elijah heard God's voice in the still. Practice quietness on this side. Do you want to hear God? Small voices are too busy. Busy is not physical. Inside of our heart, we have too many things. If you want to hear God, let your system be quiet. Be what? Only still women and men can catch this still small voice. Be still and know I am God. If you want to hear God, be still. Don't be too busy on the inside. Some of you even as you're in church now, you're closing windows. You're saying, oh God, this window, my pot of soup, I've not cooked, Papa is still preaching. You're in church, you say, oh, Papa, God, no, go close, make put in go chop food. No. How can you hear God like that? You are busy. Say, oh, this service, we take go end. Now make people close. Make I go eat with soup. My fire, my fire. Yeah, that's why you have not heard from God. Please leave the pot of soup. Hear God. Are you getting what I'm saying? G, love for God. G, what? Love for God. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Now, the end of the heart, what God prepared for them that what? Love. For the Spirit searched all this, yea, the deep things of God. Those who love God don't struggle to hear God. Do you know if you love somebody, you tell the person your secret? True? You can talk to somebody far away and your neighbor will not know. Love makes God to speak to you. When you love God, he just speaks to you. Are you getting me? May you love God. The Holy Spirit is with deep things to those who love God. You enjoy divine guidance? If you want to enjoy it, you must love God. He unfolds divine secrets to you. H, through inner witness and audible voice. Through inner witness and what? 
audible voice. It means prompting your spirit. First Corinthians 2, 11 to 13. Romans 8, verse 16. I'm trying to rush. Romans 8, verse 16. The spirit is a bear with the spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit has a voice and he speaks. Do you know he speaks? Have you ever stayed like this? Something tap you. You woke up. Have you ever experienced that before? It's the Holy Spirit. It's not a demon. Something wants to happen. It taps you. You just woke up. And you say, ah, a hand tapped me. It's the Holy Spirit. It's a person. You stay like this. You hear a voice. Move away from here. And as you just stepped out, something happened. It's the one that spoke. Are you getting me now? You hear people say, I was standing on the road and the voice said, I should shift. As I shifted the cars, ran into that place. It's the one. May you hear him from today. May you hear him from today. The Holy Spirit has a voice and he speaks. And he does what? As 8 verse 29, just write it. As 10, 19. As 11, 12. The voice of the Spirit is the voice of guidance. It's the voice of guidance. Revelation 1, 10. Glory to God. How do you know if you are walking by divine guidance? Because some people say, God guided me. So you have some proofs. How do I know? Proof all things, hold fast. Like one time we were in Lagos, and a young boy told my wife and I, he said, God told him to go and stay with his girlfriend, but just keep his commandment. I said, yeah. <laughs> he said, God told him that you should go and stay with his girlfriend, but he should keep the commandment. He said, no, it's not God that spoke to you. <laughs> we told him God did not speak to you. God cannot tell you to go and stay with your girlfriend and keep the commandment. Have you seen where they keep yam and goat? I said, keep commandment. <laughs> So we told him it's not God who told you. Uh, so every he said, prove what? All things. Some of so these people say, anything that contradicts the Bible is not God that spoke to you. You know why you should test every voice of God with the word? I'm going to tell you the things I will show. If God is the one speaking, you will see some signs. I'm going to show you. If you say God is the one that told me, then the things will show, these proofs will show. Are you going to say now? God cannot tell you now. Say, drive your wife. No, it's not God who told you. God cannot contradict his word. What God has joined together? God cannot not say the, what he joined. He said, I heard God said I should pursue my wife. Yeah. It's not God who spoke. You are the one who spoke to yourself. God told me I should live where I am now to go and do robbery. <laughs> God told you. He said, because things are tough, so he said I should do robbery. Yeah. It's not God. You are the one who wants to be on, on your sheet. <laughs> First Thessalonians 5 to the one said, Prove what? All things. Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. How do you know if you are walking by divine guidance? Roman figure one, you enjoy liberty. Number one, you enjoy what? Now, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? If, let me say this, you know why you need divine guidance? A great man of God called Paul, as powerful as Paul, he missed it. He missed the right guy there. That was why he was killed. That you are a man of God doesn't mean you stop being guided. Paul, now listen, I'll show you from the Bible. As powerful as Paul, God told him to go to where? The Gentiles. If there's no liberty in your spirit, God is not leading you. Listen. If you feel bound in your spirit when you are about to take a step, then it's not God leading you. Inside you, you are not free. Just stop. Hear what he said, for instance, in Acts 20, 22. Look at it. And now behold, we speak here. Paul, we speak here. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. Did you hear him? Not knowing the things that shall befall me. That was where he was killed. I feel bound. Even when the prophet said, the man who had this, they will kill him. Paul said, no, I'll go. There are people who have died. God showed them all the signs. That where they are going, something is, life story of a young man that was assassinated. He was a, a believer. He was about to go 
His trouser was hooked by the door. And God turned. Wow. He came back, changed the trouser. He got to the waterfront. He forget his bunch of keys. Do you, God, will God come down? Huh? <laughs> Everything was done to show him that don't travel. But he did not come back. That's assassinated him. He was bound, but he could not catch it. I have gotten to airport, bought ticket, and I turned back. That is, they were to put my luggage, and I felt no release. I said, bring my luggage back, I'm not going. And later, God told me the reason why he didn't want me to travel. When you feel bound, don't take a step. Did you hear me at all? Are you a child of God? You will never be involved in evil. So if you are not free in the spirit, Paul said, I didn't hear God's voice. That's what he was simply saying. I didn't hear what? Abandoned. I didn't hear his voice. One wrong step can be devastating. You won't take that step. Another way to know if God is one guiding you, you will enjoy supernatural strength. You will enjoy supernatural what? Judges 6 verse 14. And the Lord looked upon me and said, go in this time, mind. When God gives you a tax, he supplies the strength for it. If God is only leading you, so that something naturally you wouldn't have been able to do, you just see yourself doing it. Are you getting me now? As a sign that God is the one backing you. You see, even some things you will talk, you say, am I the one? You say, yeah, God, can me be the one to be talking like this? Because it's the one who said, the way I talk, you will know that it's because he sent me. You can't talk like that, though. You can talk like that without him backing you. If it's not back, you, some things you say, you say, as I say, after you talk, you say, am I the one who said this in? Because that's, you know who sent you. Is that true? When we are small and they pursue you and you get to your father's house, you now stay in front of your back of your father and say, if they born, you come. If, if they born, I go to you because you saw your father. When God is the one backing you, your mouth will be sharp. He will give you supernatural worth, strength. May God give you strength right now. Three. You will always be joyful. You always be what? When God is what? Whether you're sleeping on the floor, you'll be joyful. But when God, when we say ministry, we, we are not bothered. No matter what we saw. Bless. Psalm 89, verse 50. Bless is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of their countenance. For the joy that was said what? Before him. Hebrews 12, verse 2. If you're down and discouraged, watch it. If you're down and what? Watch it. That's not, you don't say God is the one guiding you. Every small thing you are depressed. He said, God called me to minister. I don't know self. This minister God called me every time. Suffer, suffer. Watch it. If you didn't employ yourself. God said, I should go to Lagos. But this Lagos, I don't know whether it's coming out of Lagoon. God is not the one. Are you going to now? I've gone to Abuja. No, no jar for me to carry water. Not God. If it's God, there will be joy. There will be what? I'm not more excited today. I've been excited from one coat. From what? There's a difference between coat and suit. How many of you know coat? Coat is the one you wear. The hands can never be cold. If they go to wash a man, one will be like this, one will be like this. You know coat? You don't know coat? Oh, coat is made from suit. Coat is the one you wear like this. The lining sometimes will overflow more than the cloth. <laughs> you use needle to raise it up. If you iron, you find that the landing more coming down. That's good. That's what? If you give to a dry cleaner, when you come back, the two hands can't be cold. They won't be cold. One will, one will go like this. One will be like this. That's good. I was wearing coat then. One day, I wore one. Then the pastor with me associated, I said, this coat, they are not the same. Don't wear it again. No. He said, Papa, give me a go wear them. <laughs> and I wore it. I said, when you go to, when you are, when you, when you, show, when you are doing this job, you did like this, praise the Lord. Make sure you don't see your two hands say cold. Just be like this. <laughs> The thing, one was like this, one was like this. I gave it to a washerman. One will come by the two hands, we are no longer equal. <laughs> but I was still excited. I was still. When God is the one leading you, if you're sipping gare, you won't be bothered. They have corn flakes. That's corn with, with uh, milk. You can also take it as gare flakes. When you put milk inside the gare flakes, you'll be sipping it and say, Thank you, Father, for these gare flakes. Gary is cassava, powdered cassava that you put milk. Very expensive. <laughs> Very. 
You know, most of you are from Ajay Butter. We, we come from Ajay Pako, we eat it like that. And when you take it with beans, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Your anointing will increase by force. <laughs> you will be joyful. You'll be what? You, you won't even feel it. If you are feeling what something down, God will not lead you. If God leads you, no matter the condition you find yourself, you just be smiling. Because you know it's a temporary situation. Very soon things will change for you. First Peter 1 Peter 1.8, the sipper said, Ye rejoice with joy, speakable full of glory. Four, that is one V. Peace and ease becomes your portion. Peace and ease becomes your what? Portion. Psalm 85, verse 8a. I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak, for he shall speak peace unto his people. Psalm 25, verse 13. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his sea shall inherit the earth. Divine guidance is accompanied with peace and ease. Five, you walk in confidence. You walk in what? Confidence. Psalm 23, verse 4. Even though I walk to the valley of shadow of death. When you are shaky on the inside, you have no assurance of God's backing. Stop and cross check. If God really is the one guiding you. If God is guiding you, you will never panic. You never what? You never panic. Six, for this section, you make visible progress. Make visible progress. Proverbs 4, 18. Stagnation for too long is an indication you are off track. If you're stagnated for what? Know that you have missed it. Go back and ask God what next to do. He said, you have dwelt around this mountain long enough. Show me two verse three. Turn so if you're at one spot for what? Too long. Ask for it. Are you blessed? Yes. Then the next maximum five to seven minutes, I'm done. Benefits of divine guidance. What are the benefits? And I close. I really close. <laughs> benefits of divine guidance. How many want the God to guide you? Do you want God to guide you? You are super. Number one, you are supernaturally empowered. You are supernaturally what? You are energized spiritually, mentally, bodily. Judges 6 verse 14. When you are guided, you are empowered. You are what? Empowered. Two, divine protection. Divine what? Psalm 105, 13 to 15, Exodus 23, verse 20. God protects you. When God is the one leading you, witches can't kill you. So I hear. Three, supernatural insight. Supernatural what? Isaiah 48, verse 17. is committed to teaching the led how to be profitable. When it's only you, will just, it will just be showing you deep, deep things. May God open your eyes. And then four, supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural what? Just see Isaac when he led him. In Genesis 26, 1 to 2, 12 to 14. You got it? Then John 21, 5 to 6. You just be getting pop, pop, pop. Results will be coming without sweat. You'll be getting results without what? May you not sweat anymore. You divine guide. What is making us get results? Divine what? Guidance. Divine guide. Let him allow, allow him to guide you. You'll be getting results like this. Okay, let me tell you a life story. This church was not growing. It was not what? People were coming, but church was not growing. And then I now asked him. I said, what do I do to make this church grow? He said, guidance. He said, do you have a home cell? I said, no. He said, that's the reason the church is not growing. And the moment you sell the home cell, the church began to grow. So if I didn't ask him, there wouldn't have been insight. Are you getting me? You have been frustrated. When you just see sweatless success. Success of what? Now listen. I prayed when HIV became at Guidance is powerful. When HIV came at Newly, I prayed, 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 prayed. The first person who got healed, it took me six months. I gave the person cassettes to go and listen. That time it was this normal tapes. The person was in Enugu. They came back, ministered, prayed. It took six months before it turned negative. So I said, time is in a year to be only two people. And HIV was everywhere. 
So I said, God, what do I do? He said, you are praying for HIV and sickness at that time. Pray for them as you pray for the dead. I said, how? He said, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. That was the scripture I used. Every HIV that time, all, have done crusade 2 and 3, all the HIV, all in the crusade turned negative. When Ebola came, I went to him the same pattern. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, John 6, 54. Give me a communion. All Ebola, that was the same scripture we used for COVID-19. All were healed. He will show you insight in the area. Your own may not be, you are not a pastor, so your own business. You ask him, what do I do for this business to sell? He will tell you, this is what to do for your market to sell. You are carrying your market. You can read all the formulas. Let me tell you something. Believers, hear this. Nobody will teach you a straight secret. I was listening to the second richest man as at that time, a Mexican. Now it's not the second richest. And they were interviewing him on CNN long ago. They said, what do you advise youths on how to succeed in business? He said, of course, hard work, hard work. Hard work. I say, it's so hard work, now you, they take care of money. <laughs> Nobody will tell you a secret. They only tell you principles. <laughs> Go and find out yourself. That's what I'm teaching you. Go and find out. Yourself. Say, Holy Spirit, tell me what I should do. He will tell you. He will. You know our problem? We, we are taught that the Holy Spirit is up. That's a mistake. It's inside you. When I say Holy Spirit now, say the truth. First thing I call to you, you didn't do like this. Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? So it's not up, it's here. He will speak to you from inside. But if I say now, Holy Spirit, you say, Holy Spirit, talk to me now. You'll be thinking a voice from up. It will come from here. He's speaking. It's you that you don't know that he's speaking. If they call your number and you're not expecting call, I think it will be a missed call. True? Now, he's been talking. You have been missing the call. But well, you're not expecting him to talk. Or well, maybe you expect him today. Supernatural what? What does it? Where are we? Breakthroughs? Okay, may you break through. Number five, he clears the way for you. Benefit, he clears the way for you. Isaiah 45, 1 to 3. Thus saith the Lord is anointed to side of the by holding to subdue nations before him. I'll look for the loop to the case and the gate shall not be what? Short. I will go before thee. If it's leading you, can imagine God going before you. And I've made the crooked places what? I will break into the gates of black cross and the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret. That means so. so when God is leading, you just make boof. No struggle. May you struggle no more. Hey. When God is leading, struggle stops. What, what stops? When he leads you, forces can't stand on your back. Struggle what? I pray he leads you from now. This is what his leading does. <laughs> Three of you come. This is what his leading does. Come. Three of you just come. This is what his leading does. I want to lose, I'm, I, I'm fairly with the Holy Spirit because he said, minister to them. I'm going, because there's only one point in the minute. And I'm going to use the two points to minister. Stand here. This is what he's leading us. Stand. Three of you hold each other like this. Back to back. Put your hands back to back. Back to back. Force. This is what he's leading on. Who is it? Oh, it's a bit tiny. You're heavy. Oh, yeah, you come. Let the heavy ones come. You're heavy more than. Stand. Let the pastor go. So you're, let him stand. Go one another heavy man, person. Come, come you two are heavy. Come stand here. Stand. Uh, no, he's taller, he's bigger than you. Who's bigger than you? Then, and that big person, join them. Why come out? You're a bit big. Join. Now, Samson, you come. You're, you're very big. <laughs> but he, he used to teach me, what is, what is it called? Kickboxing. Karate. He said, when he comes to my room, he said, this is how you do. <clears throat> I, t I told him two of us are not made to learn that one. Now, listen, as I go before you and make the crooked places straight, put your hands on each other's shoulder forcefully. 
Now this man, listen, this is what happened. No, don't, no, now just stay there. Listen, don't laugh. I'm walking by the Spirit of God. This man, all he needs to do is to go, this is how God is. When he's leading you, this is it. These are the things stopping you. They are not obstacles. Please just follow instruction. These are the obstacles that are on your path. They stand on your way. They can't allow you to go forward. Now, but this man wants God to help him to lead. Put your hand on me. Just watch what happened. This is what the Holy Ghost does when he's leading you. Just watch this man. They'll fall like paper. Don't do anything. You, God, listen. Just watch what will happen. They'll just fall like what? I, I, I'm just using myself the way God lives. Now, you, you will try to stop. You seem you want to stop. You want to stop this man by all forces. But I'm the one now going front. That's how God leads you. Now, just watch what will happen. Just watch it. Just follow me. Just watch. Could they stand? That is how he goes before you and make the crooked places straight. Every obstacle before you crumbles now. When he leads, the whole stand at you. I'll just take one more point after that. Stand. Every obstacle before you goes down. It shall give you the hidden treasures. All your blessings that were hidden, I decree them to find their way to you right now. He yes, said, I go before I make the crooked places straight. I'll break in pieces the gates of brass. The bar, anything that has locked your destiny today will be broken. Yes, <laughs> it's not by mind and power. Let him lead you. You see how sweatless you can succeed. Are you getting what I'm now? The traffic man does not do anything. He just does like this. And the big car stops. Why? The authority on him. When the Holy Ghost is in front of you, you're in charge. Everything stopping you will go down now. The hidden treasures that were there that you couldn't gain access to. By the leading of this day, you gain access to them. Now hear this. That was the last point I wanted to give. Goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. How many days? This is what happens. Two of you come. Two persons come. This is what happens. Two persons. Two young men come. Two of you come. Not even if you come with one person. This is what happens. When God leads you come now too. Stand here. One stand here. Stand here. You stand here. He say. If the Lord is your shepherd, goodness and mercy, they follow you all the days of your life. They accompany you from this day. Goodness and mercy follow you. Yeah. Now listen, I know you say it every day, but you don't know. Can goodness and mercy follow you so far? He didn't say, he said for sure. That was surely means for sure. Even you say it today without knowing the meaning. Surely, these two will follow who? Oh, you don't see the way I Who will you follow? Who will goodness follow? Who will mercy follow? Do you know what mercy means? Mercy is the nature of God. All that, uh, but you can say, God, have mercy on me. Did God heal him? Mercy is not for forgiveness. Mercy is for deliverance. It's for healing. It's for provision. It's for everything. He said, God had mercy on Israel. He provided for them. But Timios, he said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Mercy brings healing. Surely, goodness and what? Come back. Now, these two young men will not be able to stand when I, when I describe them. Surely, <laughs> pick them up. Pick them up. Now, I'm under a strange grace of God. Now, follow me. Come here. Come forward. Put your hand here. Surely, look at me. If you can flow with me, your life will change. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you. He said, for sure, they are going to accompany you what? All the days of your life. Just watch. They won't be able to stand as I move my hand. Surely, from this day, 
I decree mercy and goodness follow you. May goodness and mercy follow you. Not just today, all the days of your life. If you believe in same like a believer, I repeat from this day, mercy and his goodness will become your portion in the name of Jesus. As you make God your shepherd, you will never lack the goodness of God. You will never lack the mercy of God. If you believe in say man like a believer, you know what God mercy does? It covers your mess. He said, Israel is my son. <laughs> when God showed mercy, your life will turn. Blind Bartimaeus, all he cried was, Son of David, have mercy. This is son of David, heal me. He said, Have mercy on me. Was he healed? Yes. Mercy brings deliverance. Mercy brings healing. Mercy brings fruitfulness. Mercy and God had mercy on them. You see life turn. I don't know how you have suffered before today. God's mercy will change your story. Amen. By divine guidance, goodness and mercy will follow you from now. Amen. The louder your amen you have it done. Amen. The louder your amen you have it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, there is no end of a man who follows God's leading. Continually. You, a man who leading, you can never have an end. He keeps going like this. He will keep going like this. That's how. Be committed to follow God's what? Leading. You have no end. If God leads you, you just be going like this. There is no end to a man who, has God, who follows God's leading. You don't have an end. Keep going like this. I'm going to give three prayer points. And then we'll be done. Prayer point number one is on the screen. The student already has it. I gave it to them. It said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man. Pray that your steps and decisions will be ordered by the Lord. So that you will not be a victim of circumstances. Lord, order my steps. Order what? And my decisions. So you don't take a decision that can destroy you. One wrong decision can what? Lord, order my steps and my decisions. That from today, whatever I do, be guided by you. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. steps and my decisions that I will not be a victim of circumstances in the name of Jesus. Are you praying in the name of Jesus? Order my steps. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. If you can pray the Holy Ghost, pray the Holy Ghost. Lari pregeti akotale gadia. Order my steps. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Second prayer point. In 1 Kings 17 verse 9. It says, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. It was in the brook. It dried, and it said, move. 
And John 16 verse 13, have it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you to all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. Lord, guide me to the right places and persons at the right time that will change my life for the better. I was to go to a Bible school in Aja. They'd say I should go to Bible school. Everybody, because I was living in Victoria Island, so Aja was closer. But God said to me, go to Yenakmaja in Lagos. It's not close. God knew that if I went to Aja, my destiny would have finished. So he knew if I go to meet to Edekwa, my destiny would go up. There are people you meet your life turn. And there are places you go to your life turn. Lord, the right persons and the right places. That, are you have some? There are people in your life, if God guides you to meet them. Pow. Most times, people you meet, not necessarily tall people. That's what you think. It can be a small person. The widow of Zarephath was guided by God. Like God said, go to meet her. That's where the miracle will come from. Are you getting me? One information, life story, a Ghanaian told an American president, you will be a president when the man was nowhere as a housemate. The Ghanaian housemate said, Sir, I saw you as the president of America. That was the only first country that president visited in Africa. It was that housemate prophecy that gave him courage to contest. So the destiny of that man was in a housemate. Do you understand me? Are you getting me? Lord, guide me to where my destiny will blossom. There are people today that if they just meet one, they pick one book to read their life a ton. Lord, guide me to the right places, the right persons at the right time. That will change my life for better. Go ahead in the name of Jesus. to the right places, the right persons at the right time. That will change my life for better. To the right place is the right person. Jesus, mighty name. Next prayer from Isaiah 48, verse 17. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord that God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that shouldest go. Genesis 21, verse 19. And the Lord opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the Lord to drink. Ask the Lord to open your eyes to see opportunity. To see what? Around you that will cause you to fulfill your destiny. There are things around you you are not seeing. Lord, open my eyes to see them. Open your eyes to what? Lord, show me what. Listen. Somebody was jobless. And I said, look at the population of this church. Open an eatery. Verse sir, sir. Before I knew it, the person was busy talking. I said, open an eatery, you will be rich. See population here. When church closes, the crowd. What others will sell for three months, you sell it on one Sunday. I saw the person could not see it. Before I knew, there was a chicken republic. That chicken republic on Sunday is the fastest selling chicken republic in the world of Paragot. 
cloud. What I saw, the person could not see. The person was thinking of how to get contract, how to get, but there was money by the side. Do you understand how it is? Many have opportunity, can't see it. There's a common proverb in Nigeria, what you're looking in Sokoto is in your Sokoto. So, most times, it's not what we are looking at. It is very close to us. Are you getting me? And just what God used to change your story. Lord, open my eyes to see what opportunities that are around me. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Open my eyes to see opportunities around me that cause me to fulfill my destiny. Open my eyes to see opportunities that cause me to fulfill destiny. Open my eyes to see opportunities that cause me to fulfill destiny. In Jesus' name. Finally, just listen. This is a very short prayer. You ask God. You have done everything. You are confused. You ask God for the next thing to do. The next step. Lord, which next step do I have to take? Which next thing do I have to do? He said, I will guide you what? Continually. As I have verse 11. Lord, what is it I need to do? What is it step I need to take? What is the next step? I need to take. What is the next thing I need to do? Are you getting me? Have you ever got to a point you as if you have stopped? You don't know. You have done everything. Then ask him, now don't do it again. Just ask him, what step do I take? What next do I do? What must I what do? This church, I needed it to explode to another level. Yes, we grew, but I said, God, I want a mega explosion. I said, what do I do? He told me, do this. Do this. We move to another level. And when God is guiding you, let me say this. I don't know why God laid in my heart. Even if everybody does not believe, as far as God will give you, go ahead. God told me, say, preach from one place to everybody. They criticized me, including the members of our church. They said, no, 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 no. The churches don't do that. Yeah, can you, 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 you preach? Other people will preach. I said, God told me that I should preach from one. They said, no, this church does not do so. This church does not do so. This church does not do so. How come you are doing so? COVID came, it showed. COVID, we are the only ones around here, I don't know if we're abroad, who are doing service. Everybody was confused. We were already doing it, so it was very easy. We have the facilities. But people could not preach, people could not sing. Everyone was confused. Why he saw COVID ahead and told me. So it was very easy for us. When they told me that during COVID we had five point something million people following us during COVID, I was shocked. It was after COVID, I didn't continue. I was the one that made the mistake, so I will confess to you. After COVID, I stopped. So the old members we got all were lost to other people. I, I made mistakes, so you could accept it. I won't blame anybody working with me. It's me that, if anything is not working, it's me. Everything working here is God. Whatever is not working, is me. Whatever is working, is God. I, he told me, I didn't ask him again what to do after COVID. Do you understand how it is? 
So you ask the Lord, what next should I do? Which next step should I take? If you're in a specific area, tell him, before this convention is over, before glory is over, you will know it. Lord, this area, what do I do next? It may be a book, it may be a step, he will tell you. Go ahead and pray that prayer finally. What next step should I take? What next move should I make? What is it I need to do? Are you praying to God? If you can pray the Holy Ghost, pray the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Let's Ekratale gizia, le kratalo bregedi, le kratalo zazo. Ekratale guziji, le brakotale bregedi, la kotale bregedi akotale. Zezezi kato bragati akotale gidi, janto bragadi akata. What is it I need to do next? What is it step I need to take next? La brozi, le krato bradia. What is it I need to do? La brobre kitale gizi. Ekra tale gizi. La shuze zo bregedia kotale bregedia. Ekro kratale gizi talo bregedia kata. Thank you Lord. In the name of Jesus. He will tell you what next to do. He will tell you what next step, step to take. And you will not miss it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, when God tells you, be humble enough to accept it. But most times, it will not appeal to your senses. But if it's God, there's something good in it. It didn't make sense for me to come to Port Harcourt. It didn't make sense. This place where we're transmitting from was not where we started from. We started from a place called Plot 35. And God said, move to plus 17. When we came here, here was a garbage. The poor dustbin here. And God said, this is where I want it to be. It didn't make sense. Not knowing who, he was going to give us free of charge. We bought this place in a very funny way. I won't go into details. But God sees the end from the beginning. When he said, do this, don't ask him too many questions. Don't say, God, I have PhD chemical engineering. Are you telling me now to go into fashion business? With my PhD chemical, I'm taught to mix chemicals, not clothes. We keep quiet. He says, since you want to mix chemical, go and work in the refinery for life. And they will keep you in the refinery without refining nothing. But the day you obey him, you'll be surprised as you touch the fashion. The world will not know you as a fashion leader. If God instructs you, be meek. Be what? Forget your manganga. <laughs> 